got a young lady with us today. So, so are you homeless, miss? You're not even close to homeless, right? So I caught you going to work. Okay, so you work in one of these restaurants around here. Okay. <laughs> so how you doing today? I'm okay. Okay, good. So how old are you? I'm 21. 21. So yeah, I mean, you know, I'm out here on Candler Road, you know, just kind of saw you or whatever. And we was just having discussion. So, uh, so you're serving tables right now. Okay, and so how often do you do that? Um, on Fridays and Saturdays. Fridays and Saturdays? Okay, okay. Um, and so, I mean, as far as it goes, like, you know, typical night, you know, how much you making, you know, from serving the tables? Like, up to like $400 if I do a good job. Well, what's the average night? Like, at the lowest, I make like 250 250 Yeah. That's pretty good. That's decent. Okay. And so, I mean, so what are you doing, like, you know, during the week, Monday through Friday? Um, I got, like, a side hustle. <laughs> a side hustle? <laughs> okay, what's the side hustle? Um, I don't know if I should um, tell y'all. Well, I mean, is it some, something that we can come see somewhere? Yeah. Okay, where can we come see you? Can't tell you, God. <laughs> So, I mean, why don't you want to say what it is? Are you, like, ashamed of it or something? Or No, I'm not ashamed, but I just, I don't know. I'm a conceited person. I don't like everybody in my business. Well, right. But, I mean, if it was something that, you know, like, for instance, if it was something that you was, that people were his. So here we are, young pretty girl. What she say? She's 21, fresh out of high school, probably prom queen. Now she's on the pole. And she don't want nobody to know, especially if she don't want you to know where she at. Because like she said, she part of this new internet Snapchat era. She ain't, you know, post sister. And I see, I don't know what y'all call that, a lace front or whatever's going on, but something coming up. Something, <laughs> something bad. That's, a, that's something bad going on. I ain't too critical myself, but man. <laughs> I am. I tell you what, you, so she out here talking in code, talking about you know, wait tables and this and that. So she out here. Let's let's get something clear. She and trying to cut you off, but this is like back in the day when brothers they say, "What you do?" My folks say, "I do construction." Everybody in the streets and doing, you know, selling whatever. Everybody do construction. Yeah, wait tables. They say like big stuff. So she waiting tables. <laughs> and, and you know how y'all say, you know, whenever these goofy dudes we say, "Oh, what do you bring to the table?" And the woman say, I am the table. Well, she is the table. And it's getting served up nightly. Understand? <laughs> she is street walker out here. Ain't no tables being waited. So she out here in these streets, hardcore. She she's she's stripping. She she sell she she's selling she's selling the box all crazy. This is this extremely is, vulnerable. I mean, and extremely. I mean, this is the girl, like you said, got hand you a hundred dollars to, you know, come on now. Y'all done watch the videos. Y'all see how this goes and how yes. easily they impress. Yes. With a talk this, is, this is, is bad, man. But these post sisters like this is just ignorant. They don't know what they don't know. They got little to no guidance or they just a hundred percent rebellious. And this one where she has no idea just like how vulnerable she is. They have no idea the position that they in. That's why they sit there and they put on this front like everything under control and kosher. You you one bad decision from your last decision. It's the best way I could put it. Straight like that. Seriously. And before we get going, shout out to Big E for the cash app. My man, good look. We appreciate it. Make Big sure y'all e. hit the cash app, support the show. Big E, like Big E trying to uh, file us on his taxes. Appreciate you, Big E. Love you, brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Like we said, hit the like button. Share this video. With, especially women. Y'all got to share this amongst yourselves yeah. and talk about this stuff. Somebody got to find solutions. There you go. Please. Here is the service with Cart Before the Horse Productions. Share these videos. Show these young rebellious girls, y'all nieces, y'all daughters, whomever. Show them what's waiting on the end of that rebellious road. Show them. Because there's hundreds of examples. These young ladies, they're not 30. 
they 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 21 they 21 and and all of them ain't had terrible upbringings either as you'll hear some of them like i had normal bringing but now i'm out here and i'm doing this so please share these videos to spread awareness it's like people have no idea the droves of of homeless women that are in Atlanta. I know we, we, didn't, we didn't up to maybe a month or two ago. We had no clue. There you go. Until we saw this brother doing the Atlanta street interviews and we said, whoa, you know, this is a definitely something we would like to shine the light on. So yeah, please share these videos. Thank you. Historically proud of, you know what I'm saying? Then they would just say it, but I guess, why is it that that's something that, you know, you, you do it for a profession, you go up on stage, you walk around, you do it, you know, whatever. Um, why are you ashamed to say that? Because, like, not necessarily ashamed, but I can't think of a word. Like, I don't know. I just don't like everybody in my business. Like, I feel like it's certain stuff everybody should know. Well, I get it, but I mean, okay. So, I we got an idea of what you're talking about. We'll get back to that in a second. We'll put a pin in it. So, real quick, do you have any kids? Yeah. Okay, how many? One. One? Um, how old? He is one year old. One years old? And so as far as it goes, like um the dad is is are you guys together or whatever? No? Is he involved in his life? Okay, he's a good good dad, all that good stuff. All right, and so um were you guys like in a relationship at the time or okay. I was She just went through that whole dialogue. She ain't fucking say one word, I can't stand. She just kept you're shaking, not in wild. I said, I was, you don't stop. She, I was thinking, that. I was like, she would not. She just shaking her head the whole time. That's stuff my daughter Nadia tried to do. I say, Nadia, say, shake your head at me one more time. I guess, right. I guess that's like a young girl, arrested development here. There you go. Yes. yes. Sitting there shaking. Folks, adults out there in TV land, don't be shaking your head to answer questions. You look like your little off don't do that just sitting there especially like six or seven in a row like man yeah she's just sitting there just shaking her head just yeah. now, now i think you being uh you deceiving or something there you go now i think you being funny i don't think you take it seriously and just like this conversation that this interview she having she is not showing this interview the utmost respect she's just like yeah she looking off she really won't even look up you know what this is. Yeah, man, half. We got to understand. She's just removed from high school, like I said. She probably was a cheerleader. All her friends are probably in college doing well. She don't want this light shining on her when everybody around her probably doing well at this age. Can't can't, can't have such little faith. You got to. Uh, 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 I ain't even going to get into it. But, yeah. So what? She talking about she conceded. You ain't got no time to be conceded. Huh. Black folks coming from poverty and you know not being too many generations removed from the plantation. We, yo, and I <laughs> include myself, but I work, dang it. You're bougie and conceited and got no need to be. Like I said, like who cares that, that people know that you're having a hard time out here, sister? So what? That is what it is. Why well, be worried about it if you got greater aspirations for the future and you know you're gonna put in the work? Just so what? This is a hard time. There you go. Greater aspirations for the future and know you're gonna put in the work. You gotta remove that whole section from the conversation, and that's why they saying it because that ain't dear. Oh, and then then here you are. So this is this is uh I hate to say it, but it's the only way not to put it. This is a hopeless situation. Uh, yeah, she already got a kid. That dude. So let's see, man. It's ain't, I was about to say she probably ain't got no kids, but here we are. With him since I was fifteen. Since you it sounds like a high school sweetheart. Yeah. How old is he? He's twenty-two. Twenty-two. So you guys like pretty much around the same age. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, so what happened to that relationship? It was going on for a while, and then you had a kid, and then what happened? A lot. Um. Everything was okay at first, but like, I don't know. I hey, turn towards the sun, turn towards the sun. I necessarily wanted to, I don't know, go back to my mama's house after I had my baby. So y'all you, you, we were living together? Yeah, because we was like arguing a lot and I just felt like we needed time away from each other. And so he got mad 
I guess. And we was arguing about something one day. And then he put his hands on me and stuff. After that, we broke up. Okay. Was that the first time that he did that? Huh. the last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. I mean, you know, hey, congrats for recognizing it the first time. Um, I mean, have y'all spoken since then? We and got so, a child together before. Well, right, of course. So, I mean, have y'all talked about that incident? Yeah, it's okay. We so, what was his what, like response or whatever to this? Like, of course, when words are exchanged, you know, people, emotions take over. Well, and right, but what I mean is now, you know, like, after emotions... Yeah, at this point, I'm eager for her to start... I want them to start getting into the parents. Now I need answers. Who are these people? There you go. And this, I hate the way she's talking talking about emotions take over when you exchange words y'all gotta stop excusing this reckless behavior you can't control what comes out of your mouth uh -huh. start there like you can't just be you can't be reckless with your tongue you can't you can't just be saying anything and you gotta take some accountability there's never any excuse for a man beating or whooping on a woman and here's the thing man they love saying oh he put his hands on me y'all know what that y'all know that was mutual combat in whatever house they was in that was mutual combat <laughs> they was going at it and they love making it seem like you know oh he got mad we was arguing so i said i'm going to my mom's house and, and, and if it wasn't mutual combat you didn't call police you didn't put them people in his life so i ain't trying there you to go it was mutual combat. It was wild in that house. It was furniture moving, y'all. Both was wild and young and shouldn't have been having no babies, obviously, because here you are out here tricking, and the baby with him is just, is just bad, real bad. It was cooled down. I mean, yeah, he apologized. You know, we okay now, but... You know, it's just certain stuff you can't go for. Did he, like, go to jail or anything for that? No, I didn't no. call the police. Okay. I ain't no police at home. <laughs> <But> <laughs> and here, turn all the way towards the sun. Turn all the way towards the sun. I ain't no sun. police at home, but... Okay. No, I didn't call the police out here for anything. I ain't no police 304. Why well, I'm gonna call the police? Exactly, because it was mutual combat. Just wanted to shine more light on that. Real there quick. you go. Mutual combat. Y'all gotta stop that. Y'all can't be out here bucking up y'all chest like Glorilla and hitting these goofy nug nug dudes and then want to uh, cry damsel in distress. Oh, he put his hands on me after his goofy self then hit you back. Stop it. Stop. Take some accountability for your whole life. Would you please? Hey, I just, you know, separated myself. I feel like, well, I mean, yeah, he would have went to jail, but then I'm gonna watch my baby. <laughs> so, just thinking practically, right? <laughs> like, okay. You feel me? If he goes to jail, when I'm at work. So, who 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 watches the baby most of the time? Me and my mother. Okay, so the baby's with y'all most of the time. Mhm. Mm okay. Okay. And he has him on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. So, I mean, as far as it goes, like, does your mom know that you, you know, do the other stuff, the side hustle? Mm -mm. No. Why haven't you told her? Because I feel like that ain't her business. But I mean, do you think that she would feel a way about it? Why? So, because, like, that's not what she probably imagined for me. Because she at home watching your baby, first and foremost. And I would imagine that ain't what she imagined for you. But I'm at home watching the baby. You telling me you at Arby's or something. Here you at Magic City. Whoa! Yeah, they need to stop acting like these family dynamics is just normal. You know, everything is in place. Resources are always low, and there's always strain in the house in these circumstances. It's always strain. Time is short. Money is short. Patience is short. Y'all know how volatile these situations be. And these be y'all norms waking up every day with these wild ass existences. Ain't no way. Yeah, this is. I said she ain't tell her mama. So let's see. It's like, mm, I 
that's not what she probably imagined for me to do. So I mean, so let's just let's go back to the beginning. So where are you from? Michigan. Flint, you from Michigan? Michigan? You from Flint? Mm -hmm. Hey, up in Flint or did you grow up down here? I grew up like half and half. Okay, now. so growing up in Flint, did you have both mom and dad in the household? Um, until I was like four years old, then my father passed away. And then your father passed. I'm sorry to hear about that. Thank you. How did he pass? He had a brain aneurysm. Ooh, ooh, yeah, I know about those. My mom had one my freshman year in college, and mm -hmm. so I know how deadly they can be. One out of four people that have them die instantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, sorry to hear about that. So, so you pretty much grew up with your mom? Mm hmm Okay. So, last one, I was heading down south. I wanted to hear about the parents. And there you go. She grew up without her father. So, you know, now we can start this. A lot of this can start making a lot more sense. There you especially go. to myself. Like, this could make, all make perfect sense. Her existence. You yes, know. it do. And we always say, whenever we get desperate like this, you got to say, you know, where the where the parents, where the mama, where the daddy, daddy absent. It's very easy to uh, connect all the dots back to that. And that shows you why fathers are so important. And that's the overall point. You know, single mothers and all that is it's not a thing. It's not a thing. This type of stuff is more than likely to be the results. In some yeah. capacity, it may not be this grim, right? They may not be on the streets. As this girl's not on the streets, they may be stuck in your house for a lifetime, or stuck go. in the projects. They're stuck in the projects for a lifetime, or they stuck in mama's house for a lifetime. Y'all cohabitating, one way or the other. Don't say why fathers are not important. Why y'all don't need a man, quote unquote. That's this foolishness. And like I said earlier, there are degrees of homelessness. Just like she may not be out there sleeping on the street or in the shelter, excuse me, but she's staying on, she living with her mom and she over the age of 21, she got a kid. She need her own place. So she's homeless. Y'all know how that dynamic go. And she probably, if, if anything, she probably got a hard time getting out of her mom's house because her mom is demanding some of them resources. Please don't ever get that twisted. That's another thing. It ain't like she just able to sit there and stack her money and get in a position where she can move out. No. The cable bill need paid. She needs something on them lights, water. Y'all know how that go. <laughs> so straight like that. Now, I understand. Don't come in here. You know, the people that will say, oh, you know, about putting your kids out and stuff like that. We ain't talking about that. Mm -hmm. What we talking about is. The, the, what's the solution? She should not have a child in the first place. Damn sure not by Nug Nug. If this child ain't by the Prince of England, you shouldn't have him. And this is why we talk about Mary before you carry. I can say what y'all want. Obviously, this goes for all of us. We can't re reverse the hands of time, but for y'all to say this is not a great solution going forward, you just being an a-hole because it is. Now, obviously, you, if you the hit dog, you the hit dog as we all are. But don't say it's not the best solution just because you didn't practice it. Straight like that. Yes. You know, like Gavin said, some of us are the hit dog. And that you got to understand, we have made every light of so many things. Back in the day, a kid had out of wedlock, you know, was called a bastard child for a reason. It's so many of us, we all bastard children, and we see the struggles of bastard children. It is not good. It's not. So we got to understand and stop turning a blind eye to the term bastard child. Being a bastard child myself, stop with the bastard children. Like Gavin said, things happen, but we got to do better moving forward. And that seems to be an issue in the black community. They say, you know what? How dare you say something? You ain't no better, yada, yada, yada. So you can't speak on the matter. No. And that's and that's why our community is in the shape that it's in. No one dare say anything. No one dare talk about these post sisters out here homeless in Atlanta. No one dare say anything because they don't want the rest of the crabs at the bottom of the barrel pulling them back down. To heck with that. Shine a light on it. You got to eat it. Okay, did you have a stepdad or anything like that at any point? Yeah, but you know, he recently passed away in 2021. I'm sorry to hear about that. Sorry to hear about that. How did he pass? Um, I believe he had a heart attack. He had one before, 
but like the last one that he had it messed him up real bad and like his brain started swelling and everything and like he hold on now who is her mama the black widow how are these men just winding up like this i hope they looking closer at this kind of i mean seriously with all due respect man, yeah some fishy no i mean same so, men they die their brains and stuff and they keep winding up with your mama is she driving men crazy what's going on yeah like seriously man these stories be twisted we got to understand something i agree who is i would like to see and meet this not meet her i would like at least like to see a still image of her <laughs> you know from afar and just lay eyes on it and see what we're dealing with because come on her last from her from her uh recollections the last two men or her actual father and her stepfather both died of extreme and severe brain complications you know aneurysms and then brain swelling with the lad with the stepdad via a heart attack i don't know how your brain swell up from a heart attack but it's safe to say you know health was just terrible probably big heavy dudes and that's the thing i'm a little naive you know and but he's was most likely some big old blowed out dudes that's true man. you see what i'm saying so they all like she said he already had a heart attack but this was the second one really messed him up, made his brain swell up. He probably had the gout and the and all that. So, you know, that, that's unfortunate okay. because yeah, that was just, yeah, my immediate spidey senses just start, you know, me. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, this yeah. All right, all right. Nothing to see here. <laughs> they say they had to crack his skull because his brain was swelled up so bad. Mm. I can't understand that, but and so that's you grew up with him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, did you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got um two sisters, three brothers. And where are you? Brothers. Okay. Where are you in the birth order? Um, my mom got four kids. My daddy got two other kids. That's not he, that's not my. We don't have the same mother. Right. But as kids. far as your mom, as far as you growing up in the house, where where are you in the birth order? I'm what? a second. Okay. Okay. All right. And so. Okay, so I mean, growing up, would you say you had like a fairly normal childhood? Good childhood? You went to high school, did all that? Yeah, graduated? graduated 2020. Okay, 2020? That was the year of COVID. Mm -hmm. So did you get to walk or whatever? Man, that sucks. I feel so bad for y'all. I ain't gonna yeah, lie, man. So it, it, it really is the worst. What high school did you go to? I went to, I went to Lothonia High School. You went to Lothonia? Hey, man. Shout out that L Town, man. Shout out Latonia High School. Yeah, I actually was a female wrestler. I used to wrestle there. You was a wrestler? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Shout out okay. to Coach Kano because he taught me everything I know. Hey. A female wrestler? And we talking about wrestling. We ain't talking about WWF. We talking about like wrestling, rough and tough, rugby style wrestling. I think that's impressive. Wrestling is one of the, if not the most toughest and physically demanding sports and she had her whole wrestle i believe it i believe it i mean hey that's not really surprising to me at all good for her you know she out here having a rough time in life she gonna need all those skills you know for sure she might need to know how to like her there we go so now now that y'all know she was a whole wrestler in high school what's the chances that that was mutual combat with her hey, bring that full circle for him. Come on, man. Stop playing with me. Y'all see what this is. Not only mutual, she probably had that brother in the, the cross face crippler up in there. Come on. All man. that. All that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and here's my theory. Sisters like this, I I am one of the people that would say that some women are forced into masculine positions. If you ask me, she then saw her her biological father passed away from a, a brain aneurysm. He probably went in the best of shape. And then her, I'm going to go ahead and condemn her stepfather who just passed away as being fat and blowed out. A lot of these sisters don't even get to see a respectable, presentable male figure. Huh. And, and I just don't think that's fair. They just don't, you know, outside of, some celebrity on TV or, or or an athlete, and that's bull jive. And that's my theory. So if you find if you ask yourself, oh, how do you sisters end up want to be wrestlers and boxers and trying out for the football team? 
If you ask me, lack of true masculinity. You got you be having <laughs> these big old fat dudes in the hood pretend to be tough because they big and fat. <laughs> Stop. There you go. But yeah, that's that's unfortunate. So she had she actually had two father figures, but if you ask me, it don't seem like really either one of them was any in any good condition to really be a good role model or influence. Huh. I.e. her observable reality. So yes, yes, sir. <laughs> Hey man, shout out Coach Kano, man. You was I would have never guessed that. Like looking at you now with this kind of girly appearance that you have and everything. I never used to be like this. You was a tomboy? So when did you start doing the girly thing? Like, I'm saying like 11th grade, 12th, no, really, yeah, 12th grade. So that's kind of when it kicked in? A little bit. I started with eyelashes and stuff like that. I used to do none of that. It was just lip gloss. I'm Did you ever here. like deal with women? I plead the fifth. Oh. <laughs> so okay, okay. So so let me ask. Let me ask. So di did you did you deal with women first or men first? Men. I'm I'm taking me all. Well, I get it, but I mean these days, you know, y'all y'all young ladies these days. I have daughters, so I know. Here we go. More than sexual liberation. It's reaching. That's why we shine the light, y'all. This hits on so many different fronts. There's so many issues going on at the same damn time in the community. It's unsurmountable. We are doomed, effectively. There is no saving the masses. We're just trying to get a few scroungers here and there. Let's get that understood. That's And that's all. Yeah, we have come to the grim reality a while ago that can't save everybody, but if we can spread a little awareness and maybe get some people that's on the fence and get them on to the right side, then glory be. But there will be a mass amount of casualties. So, yeah, can't save everybody for sure. Straight like that. Ain't trying to either. And you know what? It drives me nuts the way these women will, you know, they make light and a joke of anything. He sitting there talking about, you know, you ever mess with a woman and not show about she plead the fifth and it's all funny and laughing. Ha ha, key, key, key. Like you still in high school. No, you 21 years old with a kid, a whole kid. You in shambles. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing funny. Ain't nothing funny. No, I never understood that. If I'm losing, ain't a damn thing funny. You understand? Ain't nothing. There's nothing comical. If I'm down bad, I can't. Ain't nothing funny. I never understood that. But they laugh, kiki, ha ha, joking like the shit's cute. It's not cute. It's not. I hate the whole, her whole, I'm not saying she should be out here depressed and woe is me. But humility, you know, got some weight to it, man. Show some humility. Show some concern for your situation at least i ain't saying be depressed and mopey but i'm not out here kiki ha ha yeah i plead the fifth on that what the freak is so funny right delusions, now pure delusion that's all and ain't nothing good about being delusional ignorance is not bliss to heck with that ignorance is ignorance <laughs> how about that Trust me, I read the text, okay? <laughs> I read the text, okay? So, okay. So, what point did you start dealing with women? <laughs> like I said, I have daughters, so I'm interested. I want to know. I, I want to know how it works. Really nah, cool. come on now. We already said, like, now, no, now we, no. we said the other thing. That's fine. Down but that road. <laughs> Well, I just want to know. I'm, I'm curious. Mm -mm, my mom might say that she is not. Well, don't you think that maybe your mama should know who you are? Hell no. You just want to have a representative to your mama. No, she needs to think I'm the beautiful angel. No, the no, she guy. needs to know no. that you're a real person. You think your mama dumb? You think your mama don't know that you're a real person? You probably got yeah, some stuff going on. she know I'm a real person. So what's she think? You got a whole child talking about I want my mom to think I'm a perfect angel. Y'all got to stop that. And parents, y'all got to stop being so naive with these damn kids. Call spade a spade. Y'all know y'all can Quit saying my baby so good. Not my baby. Come on, man. She down on Candler Road. If you know anything about Atlanta, Candler Road is not where you want your children. I promise you.
I don't know nothing about Candler Road, but I do. <laughs> yeah, you hear that, all the rappers talking about it. You hear you okay. Hear it. yeah, I, that's, it's an infamous place. Okay, that's the trap trap. All right. I see the background. It don't look too appealing, but yeah, this this sister here, she don't want to talk about her her uh lesbian exploits. And uh like Gavin said, parents, we gotta stop being so naive. And and yeah, and act like these kids, there you go. Y'all know how y'all was when y'all was 14, 15, 16. Lord knows I know how I was. Stop playing dumb. Stop. That's another thing. We need talking about, you know, sexual maturity needs to stop being so taboo in the urban community. Because if y'all, y'all phone gonna beat the phone, these cell phones gonna beat y'all parents to it. <laughs> and that's bad. Last thing you need your child to do is learn about their sexuality via this these terrible phones because it's going to teach them all wild wrong wonky self-destructive stuff so that's the number that's the biggest thing i think that's talking about we got to stop being so naive stop backing like your son your daughter ain't about to take a strong interest in opposite sex relax it's coming just like you did so stop that whole angel thing and stop being a fool seriously Talking about, I don't want my mama to know. Come on now, your she, mama know. Your mom just being ignorant as you. That's she watching her kid right now. She I mean, watching. Come on. Man. You do at night during the week. She think you going to the Bible study? <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Bible study at, at the Blaze. Yep. <laughs> that ain't how it work, man. Yes, it <laughs> Your mama been here, done that. Trust me, she ain't no dummy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I ain't finna tell my my damn stuff. Who, when we started doing that? Oh, on this channel, like long time ago. Listen, this is what we do. We're, we're, we're transparent. Mm -hmm. We're transparent on this channel, so it, it's it's not to embarrass you or anything like that. It's for all of us to gain understanding. It's for all of us to learn more about each other. You know what I'm saying? And stop hiding. Stop being secretive about this and that so we can learn. It'll help the person that's watching this story to understand their daughter. That's your same age that may have gone through some of the stuff and may be thinking the way that you're thinking. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't get it. The parent, but they may watch this video and say, you know what? That's kind of the, the same thing my daughter was trying to explain to me and I couldn't hear it from her. Mm -hmm. But watching this young lady makes me get it, mm -hmm. you know? So it's really just about kind of helping people to understand us. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, it's not to say like, oh, you should be embarrassed or anything like that. But we just want to know, like, as a young lady, I have teenage daughters. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to know, like, when, how those things kick in and when does it switch? So, like, you know what I'm saying? You know, enlighten me. Give me some, give me something. I'm a dad. I'm a, I'm an older guy. Tell me how this works. I mean, um, it just come about your mentality. Like, when I was, like, 12, 13 years old, I used to cut grass, like. I never, I never, my mama always taught me, like, I always have your own. She didn't tell me, no, you need to go out and get a job. But I don't know. I just always want to have my own everything. And I work hard. Like, it's not necessarily about what you're doing to do it. As long as you're not, like. So, she said, mama told me, always have my own. This is a young girl who used to wrestle and cut grass. She's apparently masculine. According to her, and her mama told her, have your own. You don't need no man. Y'all got to stop this. And we see where this po thing so confused. She went from cutting. Listen, y'all got to pay attention to the trauma and the hurt and the pain in her face. For one, she ain't she ain't really taking this conversation seriously. She's sitting there, uh-huh, uh-huh. She go, uh-huh, this poor brother to death. Uh-huh, uh-huh. They're arresting her the head. And, uh -huh. Just shaking her head and uh-huh. And what was a character on the Little Rascals? Name was Uh Huh, because all he said was Uh Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she saying here, she's not taking this seriously at all, at all. This is she went from back to her confusion. She went from wrestling, cutting grass, being a tomboy to homeless and stripping with a kid. Houseway. How you go from being a wrestling grass cutting tomboy to homeless with a one year old child? And you stripping, and pre and most likely doing by the ugly. age of twenty, doing all this. By the age That's of twenty, past life just the whole world win. Come on, and you know what's amazing? She really has yet to say anything negative 
I guess she didn't say too much negative about her father. Not, her father. Not, not to cut you off, that show you how destructive and contagious this culture is. Then you just hit on how this culture and these cell phones can get a hold of your baby, your tomboy oh. grass cutting baby, and turn her into a lady of the night. Y'all must understand that that quick. So understand why this alarm is being raised. How, that's that's a heck of a transition. Has she went from being a grass cut and wrestling tomboy to being pregnant? I mean, having a whole kid stripping homeless by twenty. How did we get here? She has yet to say anything bad about her father figures or about her mom. There, if you ask me, there's really no accountability anywhere. Somebody is to blame. <laughs> Because we act like this is a hood normal. We can't just sit here and act like this is supposed to happen in any capacity. This is the same it. We got to no. stop because this no. is more common than not for a 21-year-old girl in the urban community. This is more common than not. There you Pregnant go. by 21, back home living with mama, and the struggle is on now. There you go. Understand. Like Gavin said, this is a hood normal. So where other cultures will just simply other cultures will see this as a complete and utter failure as parents, everything like we just failed. It's all bad. Don't know how we're going to come back to from this. We're going to hope for the best. But in our culture, this they like this is just a rite of passage. That's where you're wrong. She'll figure it out. She's still young. She'll figure it out. You What was you doing when you was 21? Yada fucking yada yada. I'm sick of y'all with that. Quit acting like some of this stuff is a rite of passage. Some of these people are doomed to never return. Y'all send them into that forest and they never come out. They never come back. They not come, they not equipped for it. And that's what we got to stop acting like these struggles are rites of passage. They're not. They not they should not happen. The creatures that emerge out of these circumstances and and make something of themselves are amazing. But you can't expect that to be the path of every child growing up in the hood. Because there's going to be an extreme amount of casualties, don't you see? Yeah, we got to stop that she's young. She got time. What were y'all doing when y'all was young? That got to be the dumbest shit I hear people say in my life. I hate, I just can't stand it. Like, why do y'all say that? Y'all know these people. Show me all these results in these examples where people are recovering from these circumstances. Show me. Not one person. Show me fifty more than 50% of the time where this is working out. There you go. We can't say and say she young. She still got time because Mr. Six Figures, that probably was looking at her before she had a kid and all this. Now he ain't. Don't you understand? Every woman out here, for the most part, wants to live a soft lifestyle. They all want Mr. Six Figures. They all want to be happy, yada, yada, yada. Understand that a rite of, pass a rite of passage does not disqualify you from, from life experiences. It shouldn't. There we go. If, if you've got to go through something that's going to disqualify you from having a, a chance at a pursuit of happiness and fulfillment, it ain't a rite of passage. It's something that should be avoided like the plague and being a young girl, a single mom and homeless. This is, this is, should be avoided like the plague. I don't know. Just don't go too deep. Like, you talking about don't what, lose yourself. You know? Well, I, well, I was talking about as far as the, the ladies though. I was, far, I was talking about as far as dealing with ladies, being a young lady, dealing with other young ladies. Was that a situation that you decided to do that like you kind of were the aggressor or did someone you know did another young lady like kind of was you know aggressive towards you uh -huh. and kind of convinced uh -huh. you to do it no no it wasn't like that or nothing like that but i ain't even go like the whole ma <laughs> the whole mouth like no so it was just like kissing and stuff or i don't know like not 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 i don't know not too much not too much i mean there's a song called i kissed a girl so that seems to be something that, you know, happens. Yeah, but then I ain't gonna say I ain't like it, but I realized, like, I, I really didn't like girls like that. Okay, okay. So it was kind of like, like just a fad or something? You know, like, my mama, and I asked my mama one day, like, if I was gay, like, would you not love me or some shit like that? And she was like, no, yeah, you're my baby. I'm gonna accept you the way you is. But how, what make you feel like 
you like females like what make you feel like that like and i just like the reasons i was giving her was just not valid like they didn't they make any pretty, sense yeah they mm -hmm. pretty every female gonna think another female pretty all females compliment each other like oh they got a nice body what age were you when y'all had that conversation i was like 13 13 i was in middle school though okay okay but, and she was just like she was like so would you have sex with a girl like and i'm just thinking to myself like hell no nah. But, so I mean, did you ever? No. Okay. So you never I mean, took it that far. No, okay. No. Okay. But that's when I realized, like, now that I'm older, you know, when I try to experience, like, mm -hmm, I guess that's just not for me. Okay. Okay. So when did you and your ex? When did you and your baby daddy's break up? Uh, yeah, like 2020. What? And so have you been? Have you had like a boyfriend since then? I mean, yeah, a couple long, long sides. You know. Couple little guys, little guys. Right. Couple, Not too serious. Little rotation here and there. Little me? rotation. <laughs> oh, boy. You feel me? A little rotation. This young girl so lost. It ain't even funny. This is sad. This is sad. This is our culture. These are the babies we create. These are the babies. She, there's no accountability. She's sexually liberated. Mm -hmm. She do what she want. She lying. About fifty percent stuff coming out of her mouth is a lie, or or just pure deflection or deception. So she's saying, talking about she had a little rotation. <laughs> Ladies, it's impossible to move like a man. You can't do that. It it never works out in the end. Come on, I got a little rotation. You homeless. You got. You got your probate one-year-old child. You're in a bad way. You out here stripping. You talking about a little rotation. Stop the delusion. Stop the self-destructive behavior. You ain't got no little rotation. They got you in rotation. You goofball. Stop. Man. Stop. <laughs> but not, not so serious. <laughs> I just be chilling. I ain't trying to cover these niggas. I'm trying to get to the bed. I mean, was was before these other guys. I ain't trying to cuff these Negroes. I'm trying to get to this bag. What bag? Nug Nug. Nug Nug, where you at, man? Where Nug Nug at? Uh-oh. Somebody done called him an Uber. There you yeah. go. Easy work, dog. She 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 at the script, local script club all that. This easy work, dog. Easy work. Y'all got to start with this bag talk. It's, it's okay. Maybe I maybe I'm off base. Cause maybe bag. I mean, maybe it's just such a vague term that to me maybe means something, but to people, bag could just simply mean money, if you will. The any amount, you it's know, just anything. It just mean like just twos and few. Like it means something, but to these people, words don't mean shit. So yeah. when you say somebody talking about getting to a bag, you think somebody. Six figures, buying property, doing amazing things, a CEO somewhere, a bag. Now yeah. somebody who work at Arby's or Wendy's, whatever. There you go. Because you're clocking in, getting some type of income. Y'all calling that a bag. I guess it yeah. is a bag because here we go. We think about big bag. This is a small bag, like a crown royal bag. But <laughs> let me find out y'all out there chasing crown royal bags y'all out there chasing purple velvet bags oh. listen a bag you gave it right a bag to me is uh enough bread that can change your life or sustain the standard of living if you ain't out there acquiring these kind of bags yeah you keep the crown royal bags man it's all about progressing and or maintaining a quality standard of living what is a quality standard of living? Paying all your bills on time. You know, being able to put fuel in your car. Having life insurance policies. Having insurance on damn near everything. <laughs> if you got kids and a family. Uh, being 100% resourceful. A quality standard of living. Quality. Everything goes smooth. When you got a quality standard of living, you won't find yourself at the Walmart check out you know and find out that the that them steps ain't hit 
like a brick, and now y'all got to abandon the cart with the rest, <laughs> with the rest of the uh, government stimulus package recipients. So there you go. Speaking of the bag, make sure y'all drop a little something in our Crown Royal bag. We got a little Crown Royal bag. Nothing crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> go ahead, support the show. Hit the cash app. Be generous. The links uh, pinned to the top of the chat. It's in the description. It's nice and easy. Click it. It won't take you away from the show. You'll still be watching while you're supporting at the same time, you know. So, so you like do that. that if you can. Hit the like button. Share this video, as we keep saying. And make sure you subscribe to the channel, most importantly. So you like that. Was your baby daddy the only guy that you was ever with? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, that was my nigga. Like, we was like, then, like... I ain't fuck with nobody but him. Do you still love him? Hell yeah, it's my dog. Do you still romantically love him? <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit. I cause like it's just the history. Like I've been with him. I mean, if you love him, just say it. You ain't got to say it. Explain to us. Yeah, you ain't got to say it. Do all. Yeah, <laughs> just say yeah. it if that's what it is. A little bit. Do you think he still loves you? Yeah. So why don't y'all get back together yeah, and, uh, and 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 form the family crazy. again? He crazy. He crazy. crazy. So the, what is this? Is he like a street type guy? Is he like no, he go got his work. stuff together? He go to work. He a working man. He a good. He a great provider. So what? So what's the crazy he part? Crazy. I just Give me an me. example. Give me an example. Y'all have a kid together. He's a provider. So what's the problem? Then I need to stay in the house. I need to do what he say. I don't even gotta go to work. Just this. No, I ain't no goddamn dog. Mm -mm. Order sixty six in full effect. Here we go, Dobney. What's going on? You said this is a good guy, quote unquote. We're going to take your word, even though I think, like I said, 50% of stuff is a lie. Here I am taking your word. So here we go. Let's say this is a good man, providing man, all these things you talking about. He controlling. I ain't no damn dog. Come on, man. Y'all got to stop. Here we go. There's no mercy for this one here. You out here struggling on the pole, and you just said with your own mouth that he a good provider, man. He go to work. He ain't in the streets. You know, he want me to stay home. He don't even want me to go to work. And, but you said, I ain't no dog. I ain't staying in the house. I'm young. I'm 20. Cause every, all her aunties and probably her mammy telling her how young she is and how she need to go out there and get her, her city girl life going. And now she out here stripping and she, the dude, Help the listen to her. He take care of the kid. He doing his part. He go to work. He do all that. But she just can't sit her fast ass down somewhere. What sane woman sit here has a kid? Talking about oh, he she still love him and he love her, but she won't sit down. She there's an allure out there in them streets that she currently in right now. And there's an allure in them streets and that local script club, and she can't leave it alone. Them streets is calling. Her, she is for the streets, my baby. She just said it. She said, this man, this man tried to, <laughs> damn, this, I feel like I didn't see this, this story before. Man, it took you in, young. Y'all had a king say, you know what? I'm going to take care of you, but you got to, there's some rules and regulations over here. We're going to move accordingly. And she, she just can't sit her ass down. So now she want to go. Okay. <laughs> Real talk. So at this point, brother, I feel like you're going through a lot of abuse. If you listen to me, I think you just need to fuck this shit. I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit. I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. I tell you what. I tell you what. Me and uh, me and my Negroes, we sent, we seem to be batting a thousand with these Jamaican women, brother. You need to go ahead and find your nice Jamaican woman and settle on down. Because this one here, this this street walker here, who is proudly for the streets, look at her. That she knows she a little cutie, and she got something going, and she getting that toxic wild validation at that local script club, and she can't leave it alone. Mr. Boring, Mr. Pipe Fitter, or Amazon, whoever he is, ain't ain't doing it for her. Go ain't ahead, doing brother. it. Divest yourself. SYSBM. Save yourself, black man. Go ahead. I, I, feel, I feel his pain. 
Come on, man. This dude, and she will not sit down. He love her. She won't sit down. She ain't sitting down no time soon. Then she going to want to turn around later on in life after she done had all these oopsies and snafus and be like, hey, uh, remember back a couple years ago when you want me to sit down? Hey, what about now? Uh, if if he is who you claim he is, post sister, that opportunity will be long gone. So you don't want to be like stay at home, no. do this. So you want to go to work. I want to for eight hours of the day get the fuck away from you, like and get away from everybody, my baby, everybody. And yeah, yeah, just kind of have your own life my going own on. Time. Still. You I know, if anybody ever just with anybody too much, you'll get tired of their ass. Like I get it, and that's just how I felt. Like we was around each other so but much. But do you think? Do you think it would benefit your? I mean, is, is, you have a son or a daughter? A son. Do you think it would benefit your son for y'all to be a nuclear unit? A nuclear family, mom, yeah, dad, I and mean, son. Yeah, but it's fine like how it is right now because he got his mama and he got his dad. It ain't never a time when he ain't got both of us. Like, yeah, it's still the same way. Okay, well, I can dig it. I can dig it. All right. Well, listen, Miss, we really and there we go. More of that modern hoodoo. They will rationalize anything. They will take chicken, you know what, and turn into chicken soup faster than you can blink. They make up their own rules. Oh, he he got he still got his mom and daddy yada yada yada. No accountability. You ain't about to tell her nothing that's gonna make her change her mind. She just stood there and said, "I need to get away from my man and my baby at least eight hours a day. I need to go out and do me. I need my time. Me, my, me, me, my, me, my. Selfish." Hey, what y'all raising? This is what the modern woman and the gatekeepers and all that. This is what y'all raising and passing down. This mind state, this software, it's corrupted. Corrupted software. And about time, you know, they try to work out the bugs. It, the vessel's all used up and, and contaminated itself. You get the software cleaned up. Now the hardware is all used and whoa out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> There you go. Yeah, by the time you get it cleaned up, uh, this is Windows 4 and Windows 12 is out now. This is the so it's useless now. You see, the that hardware right? is useless. Once you correct the software, the hardware is no good. See, so, now it's a whole new model out in <laughs> much better condition. Why even consider it? Don't y'all see how this works? <laughs> so.